Welcome back everybody. In this video, I want to talk about the brand new version of Luminar, which just came out. This is version 4.2 for both Mac OS and Windows. There's a lot of cool new features in here. I did a video a couple months back on the original release of version 4, and I was really excited about it then, and I want to share some of the new stuff with you guys today. This video is sponsored by Skylum. If you're not familiar with Luminar, it is a photo editing application that features a unique set of technologies that you're not going to find in other editors. And a lot of these are what we call AI driven or they use artificial intelligence. And this varies depending on what tool we're talking about, but it could be something kind of simple, seemingly, like the artificial intelligence or AI enhanced tool, where you're able to move one slider and it does multiple things behind the scenes in terms of flattening out contrast and adjusting saturation and just overall enhancing the image, or these get a little more complex. So with artificial intelligence, the software is now smart enough to know what's going on in your picture. So for instance, if you have a person in your photo, it can identify where the face is, where the nose, the eyes, the mouth, and so you can make adjustments, let's say for portrait retouching, that used to take a long time to do. You can now just do them in a couple slider moves and you've got something that's very usable. It can also do advanced masking for things like identifying where the sky is in a landscape, and this allows you to enhance specific details. You can even do sky replacement. And so I want to jump into these and give you some examples in this video. And if you want to work along, there is a link in the description where you can download a seven-day free trial of Luminar and check it out and you can go through some of these examples. I think you guys are going to be really impressed. It's also worth noting that Luminar is affordable and it is not a subscription based price like everything else on the market seems to be these days. You pay a one time fee and you get version updates for free. This is version 4.2 of Luminar that was just released so there are an enormous amount of bug fixes on both Mac OS and Windows and you're also going to notice a considerable performance boost as well. They're using smarter caching now so the software is not actually hitting your processor nearly as often as it used to be, and I love that they're continuing to work on that. But if we use this first example here, I want to get into some of the artificial intelligence technologies that I've been talking about. So I have a portrait open that I want to do some retouching on. So what we're going to do is go over to the far right hand side of the screen, and I'm going to select the tab that says portrait here. And this is going to give us a series of tools and technologies here that we can use. And actually, we're going to be using artificial intelligence in each one of these examples to make corrections in here that used to take a long time and a lot of steps in other photo editors. So the first thing we're going to look at is the AI skin enhancer. And we saw this actually in version 4.0. But what I want to do is actually smooth out her skin a little bit. So I'm going to bring the amount up and we're going to also select AI skin defects removal. And what this is going to do is clean her face up considerably. She's got a lot of makeup on. And I want to note here that it's really easy to add too much of this really quickly. A little bit goes a long way because we don't want the skin to look plasticky. And right now it's starting to go a little bit into that territory, so I'm going to bring this back just a little bit. Another slider that I really love in here, and this image in particular was shot in Florida on a really humid day, and sometimes you end up getting a little bit of sweat, you get a little bit of shine to the skin, when well, we now have shine removal. So I'm going to select this slider and bring it over, and it's going to just bring that down just a little bit. So what I want to do here is do a quick before and after. I'm going to hit the before after slider at the top of the screen. Actually, it's a button, but it brings up this slider, and I'm able to scroll, and I can see that before, after we have cleaned up the face considerably. So looking really good. And of course, it's using artificial intelligence. In other words, it under the hood knows that this is in person in the image. And so therefore, it can identify where the eyes, the nose and the mouth are. It knows where the skin is. And so you're able to get a lot of power after just using one slider. Next thing I'm going to do is go down to this next section that says AI Portrait Enhancer. And this gives us a lot of options. First thing I'm going to do is bring up Face Light. And this is just going to basically add a little bit. It's like if somebody were standing there with a reflector. It's really cool. You can just brighten the face a little bit. We don't have a red eye issue. Uh, eye whitening's fine. I'm going to bring the eye enhancer up and let's see what that does. Just brings a little bit of color into her eyes, a little bit more detail. Uh, you can use the dark circles removal. We don't have a lot going on in this portrait. New in this version of Luminar 4, this is 4.2, so we now have Slim Face 2.0. Now the whole idea here is this is a common technique that you have in portrait retouching where I'm going to crank this slider up. It's actually going to slim her face down a little bit and this one does a really nice job. This is particularly useful if if maybe you're using a wider angle lens, it's a common technique that you see in portrait retouching quite a bit is actually slimming the face. And this has a really natural look into it. And I think it does a wonderful job. Another common technique is to enlarge the eyes. Again, be careful because this can get a little cartoonish. If you're not, it's probably a little big there and just going to draw a little bit of attention to her eyes. We've slimmed the face down just a little bit. Uh, she's got pretty thick eyebrows, but we do have a slider for improving the eyebrows. If we want to use that, you're not going to see a big difference here. 
This is another section that I use quite a bit. Uh, she is wearing lipstick, but I want to saturate the lips a little bit. We're going to bring a little more redness in, and I want to darken those too. We're going to bring that down a notch so it's not too garish, and we're starting to look pretty good. There are no teeth in this image, but you could whiten those as well if need be. I'm going to bring the saturation back just a little bit. It's looking really nice. So now, if I go up here, and I'm going to do my before and after comparison, and you can see that we've done a lot of work to this, and when I whip it over, you can see that the slim slimming of the face actually looks very natural. Uh, this is portrait retouching, which used to take a long time to do and a lot of steps. One other thing that is really cool, I'm going to reset these here for just a second, is that we now have AI filters built into the looks. Now, a look in Luminar, basically any setting configuration that I have, I can save. And some other applications refer to this as something like presets. Luminar calls them looks. If you click on the looks tab here, there's a whole section in here. We're going to go find it for portraits. So let's hit portrait. And you can see that, uh, let's grab female portrait here. When I select that and bring that up, it's going to also do some face slimming and it allows you to save AI driven configuration. So I'm going to do a quick before and after here so you guys can see her face is slim. This was saved into a look. So this is something that is very cool and saves a ton of time in Luminar. Another technology that I want to share with you is the AI sky replace tool. So to get there, what you're going to do is on the right hand side of the screen, we are going to go under the creative tab. The first section you're going to see says AI sky replacement. Let's go ahead and open this up. And this couldn't be easier to do. So the problem that I have with this image is my sky. And this was a difficult image to capture because of the dynamic range involved. This was shot obviously in the shade. You can see from the airplane hangar here. So we have some highlights that got blown in these clouds and I just can't recover them. So we've got some options here. And the old way of doing this would have been to create a mask and get rid of the sky completely and try to bring something in. But in Luminar 4, we have the sky replacement tool. So what I'm going to do is go under sky selection up here at the top and let's go down and choose dramatic sunset 4, for example. And voila, looks pretty good. So this is a very dramatic sunset. And again, it looks really good, especially like, you know, when you used to have to go in and mask out stuff like this railing in here where it's all these little tight spaces. This does an excellent job with this. A couple of controls that we have that we can uh, use to our advantage here. So it does a really good job of detecting the horizon, but you can also adjust the horizon and blending if that's not quite right to your taste. I want to bring it down just a little more. There we go. And it really looks seamless in there. You can also reposition if we want. I'm going to relight the scene just a little bit and uh, it's going to add a little more mood. It's going to bring my shadow areas in just a little bit. Uh, sky Global, let's go down to Sky Defocus. Now this one's actually kind of important too because the way lenses actually work is you do not have an infinite depth of field ever. So if your sky is just a little too clear, a little too fake looking, you can actually go in and just add a little bit of blur to it. Usually like one or two does it. And that's almost too much. I think in this case, I'm going to go ahead and leave it wide open. It looks pretty good. It's a pretty sharp image. Uh, another thing I'm going to do is adjust the sky temperature. I'm going to bring that up and warm it up just a little bit since this is a sunset image and it's looking really good. And you can also bring your sky exposure down just a little bit, maybe get a little more drama in there. It's looking pretty tight. Another thing that we can do is we have the ability to add sun rays. This has been in Luminar for a little while, but anyway, I'm going to go ahead and click on sun rays. Let's add one. So let's place the sun center and I'm going to bring it down to where the sun is in this image. And what we can do is we can adjust the amount. I'm going to bring that up and whoa, it gets crazy fast, but it adds a little bit of, uh, you know, depth to our image, a little bit of interest with the light. And uh, I can change the length of the sun rays, the penetration here, the overall look. And you get something that's starting to feel a little bit good. And so this looks nice. I really like it. Let's do a quick before and after. I'm going to bring up my before and after controls here. And we can see already there is a huge difference. So here's the original image. Here are the edits that I made. And literally I did these within just like a couple minutes. It's pretty crazy, like the masking capabilities that are in here. I think this is cool because I think it's something that Skylum have really just barely cracked the surface on. I think there's a lot that they're going to be able to do using artificial intelligence to on the fly essentially draw masks. And finally, I want to share with you a new feature in Luminar 4.2. This is the AI Augmented Sky Tool. So we already have seen what we can do with replacing a sky, but let's see what augmenting does. So what we're going to do, once again, it's under the Creative tab. It's the second one down. Under AI Sky Replacement, you're going to see the section for AI Augmented Sky. I'm going to open this up. And what we're going to do is select an object first. And I'm going to use this drop-down box here. And let's just say Birds 1 and see what happens. What it's going to do is add a series of birds into the image. So 
what it's doing behind the scenes is a couple things. So first of all, we've already talked about the technology where it's able to mask out the sky and also the technology where it's intelligent enough to know what is the sky, what is the horizon and what are objects in the foreground. And this is a little bit difficult to see in this example uh, with the lifeguard shed here, but the birds are not in front of it. They are in fact behind it. And I'll show you another one in a second, but you have some control over this. I can fade the amount. I can warmth. Relight is a big one. These are really dark birds. So I'm actually going to bring that down a little bit. If we go under advanced settings, uh, mask refinement, we're fine with, you can add a little bit of defocus. And again, this is important because once again, not everything is always in focus in a picture. And so sometimes if they look a little too tight and not very real, there we go. Plus birds are usually moving. And so you get a little bit of motion blur. Defocus, you only need just a little bit. I've got mine set at five here. Let's look at another image here. This is a shot that I did a couple years ago on the rooftop of the building I lived in when I was in Dallas. We used to do movie nights, so we'd have a projector and tie a screen up. Anyway, let's say that I want to add something into my sky here. So what I'm going to do is go into object selection. I'm going to go down and select moon one. We'll bring a moon into this and you can see it brings a moon in and it's actually behind the overhang here. What I'm going to do, I need to move this around. What we're going to do is select place object. So when I click that it's going to draw a bounding box around the moon what's really cool again it's smart enough to know objects in the foreground even though this is a really dark image where the sky is where the horizon is so it's using a combination of all of these and if I made this moon a lot bigger for instance and you can also rotate it from here I'm not really wild about that placement and it looks way too big and is a little corny but I'm showing you that you can put it behind objects which is actually very cool but if I bring it up like so and make this moon just a little bit more believable in size it's a nice way to just add a little bit more into my image and into my composition to round it out a little bit and uh, it looks pretty good actually I wanted to spin the other way let's bring it around there let's face it down just a little bit and we have sliders here so we can tweak this a little further so for instance I might want to go ahead and warm this up just a little bit can warm it up or I can actually cool it down depending on the scene that I'm in. So you basically the whole idea is to make this look a little more, more realistic. Show you something else. You can also bring in your own objects just like you can bring in your own skies. And all you need to do is have a PNG file with a transparency layer in it. So another image that I did a couple years ago is this one. And I did it with that Nikon with the crazy long lens. And so basically what I do is create a transparency layer of this. So we get the sky that comes through if you want a whole tutorial on that let me know and I'd be happy to do one but what we're going to do is go back to Luminar and I'm already saved that so we're gonna bring that moon in so let's reset our moon and what I'm gonna do object selection and we go all the way to the bottom to load custom image and I have one in here TF moon 01 that I'm gonna use there it is let's go ahead and open that up and boom it's huge so way too big let's go ahead place object let's dial this way back in size and I'm going to bring it up here let's make it look a little more believable Kind of looks like the Death Star right now, but uh, it's very textured. Let's spin this around. We'll work with it just a little bit. So uh, light sort of coming back from there. So let's kind of try to make this a little bit more believable. And I'm going to go ahead and bring that down in size. So there we have something that looks slightly more realistic. And I'm going to go ahead and deselect that. We can also warm this up if we want. It's already kind of warm. I'm actually going to cool this moon down so it looks a little more natural. And then under advanced settings, I'm going to add just a little bit of defocus to this so it's not quite so sharp. And uh, yeah, that's looking pretty good. So you can bring your own objects in for AI augmented sky. Creative possibilities are key. And that's one of the things that I really like about Luminar is that it gives you a lot of power. It's a big time saver. You can use one slider and have it a big impact on your image and change several things at once. And once you get used to working with this, it's a really powerful tool. I think this is one of the reasons that I would not consider it to be a competitor to something like Capture One, Lightroom, Photoshop. But what's really cool is that it complements those applications really well in the way that you can run this as a plugin. So right now we've been using Luminar as the standalone application, but let me give you an example where you can bring this into your workflow in Lightroom and you can use it as a plugin. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that we have the plugin installed. So if you go back to Luminar 4, I'm going to go into the Luminar 4 menu at the top. I'm going to go down to install plugins. And what it's going to do is it's going to bring up this window. I actually have both of these installed for Photoshop, which is already installed on my computer and Adobe Lightroom Classic CC. 
see. You can also uninstall them for some reason you want to here, but this is where you make sure they're installed. They are installed. I'm going to say done. And now I'm going to go over to Lightroom. And the cool thing here is if I grab the same image here, I'm going to right click on the image and I'm going to say edit in and you're going to see Luminar 4 in the drop down. And what this is going to do is it's going to prompt uh, if you have any Lightroom adjustments made. This is typical with plugins. You can do the original copy. This one doesn't have any adjustments, so it needs to create a TIFF file. And so what it's going to do is do that when you say edit and it's going to go ahead and prepare that file. And it's going to bring it up into Luminar. So when you get into Luminar as a plugin, it looks pretty much the same as the standalone app. The only difference is you don't have your library. So over on the left hand side, you're going to see that we don't have any icons. They would normally be here if we had multiple images because we're just working on one. So you can make this part of your workflow in Lightroom. And this is really cool because I have access to all the tools. It works just like Luminar as a standalone application. So my enhancements are here, my structures here. If I was doing a portrait, you have access to all the same stuff. So it's really cool in Lightroom. And I think it's even cooler in Photoshop. And I want to show you a little trick on that. So I've got an image open in Photoshop. And what we can actually do is use Luminar 4 as a plugin and it works as a filter. Now, the really cool thing is that you you can convert your layer to use as a smart object and this will make it so any edits that you make if you change your mind on something it's non-destructive and you can go back let me show you how to do that this is really cool so i'm in photoshop what i'm going to do is the first thing under the filter menu if you haven't already converted your layer to a, use as a smart object you want to just say convert for smart filters and that will convert it to a smart object i'll say okay you can see over here on the layers panel that it's going to convert that background layer into a smart object there we go. Now what I'm going to do is go back to the filter menu and down at the bottom, you see a category for Skylum software. I'm going to click on Luminar 4. And what it's going to do is just like it did in Lightroom is it's going to open up Luminar as a plugin. So again, it looks just like the standalone app, but you don't have the thumbnails for other images because we're running it as a plugin. And so now what I can do, let's just go into AI Enhance, for instance, and we're going to go ahead and crank up the accent. And I'm just going to make some edits here. Let's go to structure also, and I'm going to let's give it an amount a little bit of boost and so yeah here we go let's go to light I'm going to warm that up a little bit so on and so forth so I've made some edits to my image all looks good now when you're done what you want to do is on the top left hand side you're going to see apply so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and apply that it's going to take just a second to process the image and then what it does is because we've created we've converted that layer to a smart object now we have luminar running as a filter on that smart object so over on the layers palette you're going to see the layer it's converted to a smart object and below it we have smart filters and luminar R4. I can add more filters to this if I want as well, but it becomes part of my workflow. I can also click the little eye icon here and I can turn them on and off, which is also very cool. And let's just say for a second, for the sake of argument, that we spent a lot of time on this. And as I said, a little bit goes a long way. And we found that this image is just a little too on the yellow side in terms of white balance. What I'm going to do is double click on the Luminar 4 icon. And what that's going to do is it's going to open it back up in Luminar 4 running as a plugin. Now what I'll do is go back to light and I'm going to bring my color temperature down a little bit because I thought it was a little too yellowish so there we go and then when I'm done once again we're going to hit the apply button on the top left hand side of the screen and you can see the updates are applied now what's cool about this is it's completely non-destructive I can go in and make further edits if I change my mind on something I can go back I absolutely love this way of working and there aren't a lot of software packages out there where you can say hey if you like the, to work on this on your own go for it but if you want to make it part of your workflow with other software plays nicely there too. So I highly recommend you use the link in the description and go download the seven day trial and try Luminar out for yourself. See if it's right for you. I think this is a really unique application. It does things that other applications don't do and it will fit into your workflow with other applications. And the best thing is the price is very reasonable and it's not a subscription. So you just buy it once and you've got it. It's pretty amazing and it's a very different approach than a lot of companies are taking. Anyway, we barely scratched the surface. This does a lot of amazing things. If you'd like to see more, let me know. Drop me a comment if you have any questions. I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, later.